The techniques I'm about to show you in this video are hazardous. Working with glass, flames, and mixing those with drugs and alcohol is never a good combination safety-wise. Always wear safety glasses. Make sure you have a fire extinguisher handy, a fan to blow away the fumes, and do not allow children to do any of these steps without close adult supervision at all times. Today I'm going to show you how to make fly eyes using monofilament for things like damselflies, dragonfly eyes, and how to use glass beads to make even bigger, better looking eyes. A few simple tools you need. Candle, and I like these little enclosed in metal chafing dish kind of candles because uh, they don't run all over the place, the wax, and also they have a very small flame. Uh, of course, you need something to light the candle with. The one other tool you really need is a good pair of of uh, tweezers of some kind. These are bead tweezers. They're great because they're serrated on the inside to hold better on monofilament. And also they're very narrow across the gap there. So you can make beads like this that don't come out too large to use on small flies. To make dark eyes like this, I use Maxima and they I think they call this color chameleon, but it's actually more brown than it is chameleon really. Uh, and it works well because it turns black when you heat it to make the nice black eyes. If you can't find that, like the, the strongest I can find in that is 25 pound. If you go up to a stronger 40 pound, even in the ultra green, you can still get them to be fairly dark for eyes, but you can get sometimes a heavier material. So we're going to show you how to make some with both of these types of materials. First, we've got a lighter candle. If you light it this way, you're going to burn your thumb. Trust me, I know from experience. So you hold the lighter horizontally, get the flame in there, and get the candle burning. Like I say, these don't flare up much. They don't run all over the place, and they, they have a nice, clean little flame on them there that you can barely see. So to start out, we're going to take some pieces of monofilament that I've cut, about three quarters of an inch long, and I make some damsel eyes out of these. We want to just get it centered up pretty much even. And when you start this into the flame, you start the material burning, you hold it horizontal because you want the heat to go this way. If you do this, the heat will go up and either cause everything to stick to your tweezers or it will cause this end to melt as well. So we hold it this way until the flame gets just about to the tweezers, blow it out carefully, and then turn it like this so the material droops and it keeps a really nice round shape. Let's give that a shot. Get it burning. Blow it out, let it hang. After that one's set up pretty well, we'll just turn it over, light this side, get it burning there, blow it out before it sticks, turn it, and let it hang. Now, if you notice that you've got bubbles or the color is too light, if you just wave it lightly over the flame, not enough to catch it on fire, you can darken it up and also get it to soften up. Now, one of the hazards of this is this material stays sticky and hot for quite a while. So it's always nice to have some kind of a little container of water that we can just dip that in, cool it right off. Then if I dry it just a bit on my shirt, I can show you that it makes a really nice pair of finished eyes. Now, suppose those eyes aren't big enough for the fly you're tying. Maybe you want big green eyes for a dragonfly or something else for a damselfly that you just can't make with monofilament. That's where glass beads come into play. Glass beads come in a huge range of sizes and colors. They're used in all kinds of craft projects. The way you size beads is like this has a number six on it, hard to read. Here's a number eight. What that's telling you is that's how many beads, if you put them on a string end to end, that's how many beads it would take to make an inch. Now, we'll get down and even use the 15s, and you can see that they're really small. It takes 15 to make an inch, and in this case, a tube of them, oh, is $9, but it will make a lot of eyes. Smaller or bigger beads like this that aren't necessarily Japanese, very highly coated, will cost maybe $3 a tube. 
Now to make eyes with these glass beads, what we're going to do is we're going to find some that are fairly similar in size. And the, I'm going to first put one on the monofilament on one side. I'm again holding the monofilament out in the middle. So I'm going to start this on fire, but instead of holding it horizontal, I'm going to hold this one vertical because I want it to heat and collapse down the bead and seal that bead from coming off the end. So let's catch this one on fire, hold it up, and when you see that little puff of smoke, it means it's usually burnt down to the bead. Now you don't want to be breathing the smoke. I have got a fan that's blowing it across because I'm sure it is probably some form of toxic, so it's not a good thing for you. So once one side is done, I'm just going to put a second bead on, do the same thing on the other side, catch it on fire, hold it up. Once the smoke clears, you've got two sealed beads with a piece in the middle where you can tie it onto your fly. A little bit of water because I don't want to burn my fingers on that hot monofilament. A little bit of drying so you can see what it looks like. And there's a pair of large black eyes for a, a dragonfly or a stonefly nymph. Now, when you want to go up even larger and go to like the size six eyes, the green ones that I have that I like for dragonfly nymphs, what we have to do is there's no monofilament that you can get that will seal off the ends of these. So what we do is we actually go smaller in size on our monofilament down to 20 pound because we're going to use little beads to block the ends of the big beads. This is where these little 15s come into play. So the first thing you do is you melt the end just a little bit. I just barely got close to the flame enough that it has a little bit of a knob on the end because I want to pick up one of those little 15s and slide it down and then one of the big beads Another big bead, make the matching set, and then a little bead. And the reason I keep replacing it to the outside so when I tip it this way to pick the next bead up, these don't all fall off, especially important when you're doing the little bead. So now that I've got it, all of them on there that I want in this set of eyes, I'm going to push them to that side that's melted already. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to melt the other side, tilt it up, get it catching on fire there a little bit, melt it up. Now it seals down on that little bead. I'm going to re-melt the other one a little bit because it's still a little bit loose. Once it sets, cools into the water, a little dry on the shirt, and there's a large set of eyes. That's how you use glass beads for making eyes for any pattern you have. You could actually make some pretty large ones for things like bass bugs or other patterns, even salt water. This is about the largest I work with, but you may find other needs. I'm going to include a link on my YouTube video to a company here in Oregon called Baker Bay Beads. Uh, they have a website selling glass beads, and they would be more than happy to help you out. Uh, the little bitty ones like this, the little 15 seed beads, as they're called. I call these peacock. They're probably in any catalog you'll find called iridescent black, but they definitely look like peacock colors, and that's the reason I like them. They have all the different glowing colors that a peacock hurl has in it. So order some beads up or find some at a local craft store. Uh, make some eyes, and hopefully they'll improve your fly patterns and help you catch some fish. Thanks for watching.